Wondering how your mindset affects your life? How to bring more energy into your business and life? Millions of people around the world ask these same questions daily. You are in the right place. Learn practices that will help give your life the meaning and success you've been searching for. Welcome to the Charge Podcast, teaching you how to create habits around real goals every day. Practical life advice from those who made it. Here's your host, Gary Wilbers. Welcome to the month of February, the shortest month of the year. But for some of you, it may seem like the longest month of the year. Remember the goals you set for yourself at the beginning of the year? Are you still committed to achieving them like you were on January 1st? Well, let's recommit. If you fell off your exercise routine, or maybe saying eating healthier, or working on a passion project, remember goals are like having your headlights on because you have to take action to accomplish them. We are sharing in the month of February some great guests on the Charge podcast. Our guests this month share their expertise on how to implement habits to achieve your goals. Learn how to network to make lasting relationships, strategies to create your perfect career, and why character is so important to living your best life. If you are feeling frustrated and stressed out with your professional and personal life, I know in each of these podcasts, the strategies that each guest shares can propel you to live a charged life in 2021. Chargers are committed to finding how each day they can make their life better by the willingness to learn, grow, and become the person they were meant to be. In my recently published book, Cultivate Positive Culture, 10 Actions to Faithful Living, I shared this quote, life is not about living in mediocrity. Life is about living into our future self. You made a great choice in listening to this podcast. Remember, the podcast is named Charge After My Mantra. Create habits around real goals every day. Let's get recharged in this podcast to influence a positive culture so you can take simple positive actions each day. Are you ready? Welcome, Chargers. We're glad to have you back again this week for another great guest. I love sharing different guests with you with different viewpoints. And the key is you get to learn and decide what you want to take action on. That's what a Charger is really about. Creating habits around real goals every day allows you to implement and do the things that you want to do each and every day. And today I've got a great guest with us. Frank, Frank Egan is a president of AmSpirit Business Connection. It's an organization that empowers entrepreneurs, sales representatives, and professionals to become successful through networking. He is also the host of Networking Rx podcast, a weekly short form podcast with insights and interviews relating to better business relationships. And he narrates the Networking Rx Minute, a micro podcast with daily ideals and inspiration. Finally, Frank is the author of several books, including Foundational Networking, Creating No Like and Trust for a Lifetime of Extraordinary su Success. And Frank has actually sent me that book. I haven't got to dive in yet, Frank, but I guarantee you it's on my list to read. And I'm looking forward to sharing that and information with our guest today. Welcome to the show, Frank. Gary, thanks for having me. It's a, it's a pleasure to be here. Well, I love starting out every guest. I have the Charge podcast, and that's a mantra for me, create habits around real goals every day. And I love to hear from my guests right out the gate, what habit or habits do you think has led to success in your life? Well, you know, that's a, you know, I used to ask a question of what's your favorite book? And when people would stumble on that question, I knew they did a lot of reading, right? Yeah. And if somebody had the one answer, it was like, okay, they've got one book. Um, that's a hard question for me because I, I'm anal. I have a lot of habits, 10,000 steps a day. You know, I get up at five o'clock, work out. Um, you know, but I think the, I think the best habit that I picked up probably 15, 20 years ago now was to map out my weeks, sit down the week before or the Sunday before, and just say, you know what, what have I got coming? what's really important, what, if I don't quite get it done, I'm going to be okay. Um, and not just take it day by day as it comes. So I think that's probably the most important habit. Yeah, that's a great one. Because when you know what you really what's most important, 
then you can put that in and allow the other things. I remember the old Franklin Covey did a lot of training with them. You know, the little pebbles are really the small things and too many people try to worry about that. Instead, it's about the big rocks that we put in each and every yeah. day. Yeah. Frank, I tell you, I got to know you a little bit already, but I think the good place to start, and I've decided to start with my podcast in 2021, is really letting people share their story. How did you kind of come to the career that you're in now and what you're doing of sharing that message? And I know you're all about relationships, but how did you, how did that kind of come about? You know, um, I don't want to say by accident, but sort of it did. I, I live in Columbus, Ohio. I moved here in the mid eighties to go to law school. I, I went to college in a small liberal arts school in uh, Beloit, Wisconsin, Beloit college. Um, and I really kind of, there kind of had this notion of do well, do well, accumulate degrees, do well in school, went to law school, got a law degree, got an MBA at the same time, got out, got a job in public accounting as a tax consultant. While I was there, I'm going to grab a CPA and I'm just going to kind of just pack letters after my name and make myself totally invaluable to, to the employment market. Um, and then I decided I really didn't want to do taxes for the rest of my life. And I left and went into private practice. And a funny thing happened when I went into private practice, Gary. And the funny thing was that nothing happened. I had no idea how to get clients. And that's a, that's a familiar story for a lot of entrepreneurs. I, I just, you know, when you work in a big firm, they just bring you the work. You know, I was decent. I was a decent tax person, but I didn't know how to get business. So I spent about a month really just, I scared to death that I was going to fail. Um, I had lunch one day with a friend of mine who was also an attorney and she took a different path out of law school and she had started a firm right out, of, right out of law school and was very successful. And I just asked her, what do I need to do to enjoy the kinds of success that you have? And she said, well, you need to get into a, a tips club or a leads group. Well, I had no idea what she was talking about, but through a couple of introductions, she introduced me to a group of people that, uh, got together once a week to learn about each other, talk about their business, what they did. And, the, and they were all from different industries, one in each category. Um, and when I saw it, it immediately made total sense. I can lift my world up by helping other people. I mean, I could talk about Gary Wilbers, Wilbers all day long and just promote, you got to read his book. It's great. This is great stuff. And at the end of the, <clears throat> at the, end of the day, be excited about it. If you self-promote for five minutes, you're exhausted. Yeah. So I got involved in this group. I became it, that chapter's first president. Uh, I became the organization's first franchisee. And then in the early 2000s, I had an opportunity to buy it out, and I did. Uh, so it, it was kind of by accident that I really got involved in this. Um, and when I bought the organization, it really kind of changed the trajectory of my life. I'm not going to be an attorney now. I'm really going to be helping these entrepreneurs, these sales reps, these professionals become more successful and the process to helping other people become the, the process to helping other people self-develop is self-developing yourself, as you know. Um, and so I just, that really kind of set me on the path to writing books and doing podcasts and all the various things. That, that is a great story. I love starting there because normally where we start from is not where we really started from or where we're at at that time. Yeah. And I think it really plays true for most people. So thank you for sharing that. So when you talk about it and you kind of go back all that way, what advice would you give to people that just starting out to what networking is and what do they struggle with the most? Do you think? Well, I, could, I think the advice to give people, and if I, if I could go back in time and, give advice to myself, the kid in high school, the kid in college, the kid in law school, focus on the relationships. Yeah. Learning is important. Don't get me wrong. You know, stay in school, go to college if, if that's for you, but whatever you do, the relationships are really important and you need to get to know people. You need to get to like people. You need to get trust, trust people. And they need to do the same with respect to you. Um, and that really takes care of a whole lot of stuff. I mean, I buried myself in, in, my, in the books and I joke about it. I don't even drink, uh, but I joke about it. I should have spent more time in the bar uh, yeah. as, as opposed to the library um, because that's where a lot of, you know, the, 
a lot of the, my classmates were, um, and they're all very successful because they had the relationships piece of it. So that would be the first thing I would say. And, and I guess the second piece is kind of connected to that is really focus on, focus on building relationships, really learning about people. I mean, you know, this, you're, you know, you're the, uh, the, the positive culture person. Um, you've, you gotta, you gotta let people know that they matter. You, you know, you've got to let people know that they matter and, and having those relationships, because if that, if you do that, they will go to bat for you. You know, networking is not about finding strangers and getting them to give you business. Networking is about finding strangers, making them friends, demonstrating that you care, and then having them send you clients. That's what networking is. And a lot of times people think networking is just getting out there and getting their cards in people's hands and hoping for the best. And it's not. Yeah, so true. And it becomes really investing. And one challenge is a lot of business owners have and entrepreneurs is they are more introverted. So many people think they're extroverts. And a lot of times they're very introverted. So when they're talking about networking, there's a little bit of that fear factor. How do I go about it? How do I make this happen? And I think one of the things that I see is, you know, what tips would you share with them to really trying to get them to make some of that small talk because sometimes they're so ingrained in their business, they have a hard time getting outside of that. Yeah. I think that's a, that's a really good point. Um, I am an introvert. I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm supposedly Mr. Network. I'm, but I'm an introvert. Uh, Friday night, I would just as soon watch a movie, you know, with my wife or even by myself. And uh, as opposed to being out with anybody and I spend my whole week out with people. Uh, I, I, you know, I think the whole notion of the notion of making small talk is uh, it, it's a it's a great question because we as um, we as humans we as humans grew up developed in small groups and you might have that might have been the only people you saw your whole life. And when you saw strangers, it wasn't a good thing. And so we're kind of hardwired to be leery of people we don't know. And I think that's why people have a problem going out to networking events. And people have a problem getting when they get at networking events because they don't know what to say. And what I'm going to tell you is this. It's not about what you have to say. It's about what you get the other person to say. It's about getting them talking. It's about getting them sharing. That's really why you're there. You're not there to sell. You're there to make them feel comfortable. Again, making this stranger your friend. Uh, and, you know, I certainly cur I encourage people to come in kind of with an action plan. What I tell people is when you're going to a networking event or even just getting on a Zoom call, you know, here we are, you know, early 2021 and COVID's still part of our lives. Um, either one of those situations, go in with the mindset that you're there to help other people. And that will do two things. If you go in with the mindset that you're going to help other people, one, it forces you to think. And when you're walking into the event, you're, you're apprehensive because that's, you're walking into a room of strangers. You're not, you're not hardwired, hardwired for that. But if you have to think about, okay, helping other people, that's going to force you to use your neocortex, which will silence the fear portion of your brain. So that's the first thing it'll do. But the second thing I find that it does is it gives me what I call the cloak of in invincibility. I'm walking in and who, who doesn't want Superman in the room? Who doesn't want Wonder Woman in the room? And if you're coming in, I'm, I'm here to help somebody. I know Gary's going to be here and I know Joel's going to be here and I'm going to introduce those two people because I think they need to know each other. Um, and that's, that's my mission today. Or I'm just going to meet somebody new and I'm going to take them under my wing. It just forces you to kind of throw your shoulders back and just have that much more confidence uh, when you when you walk through the door. Yeah, I think the real key is just what you said is when we're willing to help others, we know that plays out in our life that it always comes back to you in some form and fashion. And it really fits into what you talk about in the book about building that know, like and trust. Yeah, and I love what you said, you know, the more we're interested in the other person take it outside of ourself 
and let the conversation flow and truly be interested in others. And that just creates a real, it creates a different dynamic because otherwise we're in it for only ourselves, and it becomes very closed minded. So networking really becomes, and you know, that's one thing we've all seen the change is networking is changing. Um, yeah. Because, you know, in this time of COVID, we've had to adopt and change. And I'm sure you've done a lot of Zoom calls. I like doing the podcast via Zoom because I get to see the other person. I can see kind of their expressions, kind of decide to take it to a different direction. And it becomes a sort of networking that you're able to do with individuals. How has you seen your franchise and with AmSpirit, with all the COVID and everything else, how has it adopted and changed with the challenges? You know, I think like everybody, there was a moment of panic when this first came down in uh, almost a year ago now, um, you know, March of uh, 2020. Um, and but I think people people quickly adapted. People quickly adapted. I think that's the beautiful thing about entrepreneurs, the people that you you work with, the people I work with, is they realize that there's probably not going to be a handout waiting for them. Uh, and, and I know there were some, but for the most part, they knew they had to figure it out. And so they did and they got online and, you know, quickly you start to learn about people and, le and learn to adapt, for example, over Zoom. You and I have never met in person, yeah. you know, but we've talked a number of times now and I feel like I know you. You were introduced to me by Matt Ward, who. I think the world of, you know, and by association, I'm, you know, he recommends you, I'm going to go with that. Um, and so I think we're a little more open to those sorts of things. And I, but I, I don't know that, I don't know that this shift, this COVID has really changed networking per se, because networking is really about building relationships. And we've always built relationships. I mean, George Washington tapped Betsy Ross to sew the American flag because they went to church together. They, they, their pews were right next to each other. So they got to know each other. You know, there was no electricity. There was no phone. There was no telegraph. There was no nothing. It was about a relationship. And when the telegraph or the telephone came along, we still networked. We still needed to have that relationship. We still need to have that feel. We could just do it further and faster. And the beautiful thing about Zoom email and now Zoom is we're able to do it even further and even faster. I'm connected to people over in India. Um, great relationships with people, you know, podcasting with people over in India. And um, it's like, I know these people, you know, yeah, I've got, they've got different holidays than we do. And we have to get that all squared away. Um, but, um, but it's, they're just people. And so it really comes down to the relationships. Yeah, I love how you really talk about relationships because that becomes the key. And I tell people when I speak sometimes, when I talk about connections with others, I talk about who's those five top five relationships that you have. And now the question yeah. we have to ask ourselves, what type of impact do we want to have on those type of individuals? So, you know, we're early in 2021. So I think this is great for the chargers to think about. You may think, well, in my business, I don't do networking. Well, you do because it may all be internal within your organization, but you do networking. Yeah. It's there. But who's the five relationships and what impact do you want to make on them this year as you move forward? And if you ask yeah. yourself that question, you know, it's going to really give you a roadmap of where you want to go. Same thing you're talking about someone. If I'm visiting with someone at a party or at a networking event and I'm willing to help them, they're going to move forward. Yeah. One thing about it, though, social media is changing things. Of course, we've talked a little bit about technology already. But do you think with the social media, how is that helping or hurting us? Maybe I'll put it that way in creating networking. Is it? creating where networking will be obsolete or is it creating where we have more opportunities? It's creating more opportunities. Uh, networking again is about relationships and relationships are as old as time uh, it, with respect to humans. Um, and uh, yeah, I love this story. Somebody shared with me, actually I looked it up. It's it, Margaret Mead, who is a famous anthropologist. She was teaching a class and someone Ask the question, you know, Professor Mead, when was the first sign of human civilization? 
And she thought about it for a second and everybody's kind of waited with bated breath thinking, okay, clay pot, you know, stone weapons or whatever it might be. And she said a healed femur. She said, you know, the femur is the bone that connects the knee to the hip. And she says, in the animal world, you don't see healed femurs. You see animals that have broken femurs and, and then have died. But when you saw a human that had a healed femur, which takes without medical care, about six weeks to heal, with that said, was sent a message that, you know what, somebody had enough of a relationship with this person that they were going to sacrifice six weeks caring for them. And back in the, back in the day, that's a big deal. You know, you and I, we can uh, order up a pizza if we need to, right? Um, back then, you couldn't do that. And so it really is about relationships. So you carry that forward through time. And it's still really about relationships. With social media, the bad thing about social media is it's, it's killing the high school reunion. Yeah. I don't need to go to a high school reunion anymore because I know pretty much what's going on with all my friends. Um, but the good thing about social media is it's allowing us to connect with like-minded people. You and I are like-minded. Yep. I'm in Columbus, Ohio. You're in Jefferson City, Missouri. We're having an opportunity to connect. You know, you're having Matt Ward's out in, the, in Central Mass. We're having this opportunity to connect with people who really resonate with us. Whereas before social media, you may have, you know, Gary Wilbers may have been just that oddball in Jefferson City. You know, that guy, you know, he's lunch at 1130 every day. That's really <laughs> his discipline. is just odd. Well, it's not. You just don't. There, there's lots of us out there who have are very disciplined, who have these driven, these charger lifestyles. That, that you, you know, there's lots of us out here. It's giving you an opportunity to connect with them and, and learn and, and, and share. So I think that's really the power in where, you know, information is just flying like crazy. But it's still about connecting to the relationship. Yeah, and that's thrall. the key. That's yeah. the thing you have to realize is you can scroll that social media all you want, but yeah. who are you going to connect to there? You know, if someone shares a message with you, how are you going to connect with that person and to make the difference in your life? And I think that's the key to really look at. I've got this question and I'm kind of answering it, be asking it because of course I've got three teenagers. They're all in college now and I think it's important for them. And I haven't got through the book yet, but when you wrote the book foundational networking, and of course your kind of tagline is building no like, and trust to create a lifetime of extraordinary success. What would you share? I'm sure we've talked about some of it, but let's say, you know, you were speaking to my three college teenagers, which one of them, edits the podcast and puts it together. So I know he'll have to listen to it. All right. <laughs> what would you share with someone that was in college on the foundational components of networking? Yeah. You know, be beneficial. when I decided I wanted to write a book, there are a lot of networking books out there and a lot of them are, are based in strategy and tactics, you know, good handshake, have that, have that clean 30 second commercial. And yet I looked around and I, I saw a lot of people who, who did all the right things tactically, but really didn't have success with their networks. And then I saw other people, I saw people who couldn't put a 30 second commercial together. I, I, I had a client, his name was Larry. He, what an incredible, what an, he's since passed, but uh, I just wanted to practice law, but he just had, he had this network of people, but he was just a good old boy from West Virginia. Um, and what were the differences? And it really came down to three things. And the three things I talk about in there is one, your presence. How do you carry yourself? Mm. Nobody wants to hang with a mope. People want to hang with people who are confident. So I talk in, in the book about presence and the things that, you know, the presence you can bring, uh, to the, you know, just how you, how you show up in the world. The second thing I talk about, uh, I call it altruism or generosity People are attracted to those who are willing to contribute to others, to add value to the world. And in the book, I, I spend an entire section talking about altruism. I never talk about giving money because it's not about that. It's about the other things. It's about making introductions. A big gift that Matt Ward gave me was introducing me to you. Cost him nothing. Um, cost you nothing. We've got, con we're connected and we're able to connect each other to other people. Uh, so there's lots of things with respect to altruism. Uh, and then the last thing is what I call integrity, you know, things to build that trust, being reliable. You know, we had a podcast. Our time today was uh, one o'clock central to be on. I'm going to be here. You know, I'm, 
we're, we're going to be here. We're going to, you know, you are on mine. We're there. We're on time. We're reliable. Do the things we say we're going to do. And those things are really important. Um, sharing credit, um, not pointing fingers when something goes wrong. Those are all the little things that build trust. So often people will say, how am I ever going to build trust if nobody gives me an opportunity? And my response is, is you have an opportunity every day to show up and be that person, you know, be the confident person, be the giving person to be on time and do the things you say you're going to do. And from those little things, bigger things will happen. No, no, nobody's going to give you a million bucks just because, but you know, it'll come in time. Yeah. Wow. We could drop the mic there. We're not going to, because we're still going to go to the recharge round, but I will make sure all three of them hear it now because those are three just great life lessons. So we're all at different stages, chargers. You're sitting here listening to that again. What does that mean to you as far as your presence? How are you showing up for the people that matter to you? You know, we pick those top five again and you can expand that out. Um, you know, the generosity, what are you sharing with others being willing to give? I mean, perfect example is Frank has already introduced me to Joel, you know, and we're going to connect now. So it becomes that ripple effect that comes out of there. And then your integrity is being that person that you are. So really appreciate you sharing those because I think it really makes sense of how can we strengthen our network this year? And again, I'm not talking just about salespeople. I'm talking about you as the individual that's listening to this podcast and that person today that needed to hear that message. Who do you need to reach back out into your network and maybe connect with? And that becomes the difference that you make. And then you'll make that ripple effect that goes out to the world. So I appreciate you sharing that, Frank, some great information early here in 2021. I do want to ask you a few questions. They're kind of based on my framework, as you know, um, of the recharge round. And I'll just kind of rapid fire them to you and get your feedback on each one of those areas. So first one is share with us how you believe your mindset affects your daily living. Well, I mean, it's... Again, it's how you show up in the world, you know, um, and and we've all been tested, right? We've all starting March of last year, we've all been tested. And there are and I've seen people who have been 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 defeated. Um, and I've seen people who have just said, you know what, it's a challenge and I'm going to figure it out. And so it's it, it's it's really it's from the moment you step your foot on the floor, getting out of bed. What, what, what am I going to make out of today? Yeah. Um, and that's choice. It's totally a choice. Excellent. How about energy? You talked about you get your 10,000 steps in, but what do you do daily to bring that energy into your life? You know, I am energized by helping other people. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm constantly on the lookout for ways of, of helping people. I, I, have a, I have a mantra. I have many mantras. Um, but one of my mantras is, is that every, everybody I know could benefit by someone else I know. Mm. And you just, it's a question of just stopping and sitting and listening and saying, you know what, I really need to connect these people and before we, before I got on the call, I'm like, Oh, you know, I just had a thought. I need to let this person know about this opportunity that's out there. There's nothing in it for me. It, I think it'll be a great opportunity for that person. Um, but it, it, it brings me great joy to do those things. Yeah. Excellent. How about the number one connection? That's a tough one for you because the guy that's in the relationship business, but that's made really the biggest impact on your life. Number one connection made the biggest impact in my life. Um, you know, outside of family, I would have to say my college football coach, Ed DeGeorge. Um, mm -hmm. You know, he was just somebody who, brought me out of a sleepy little town in the upper peninsula of Michigan and, and really kind of inst instilled in me a desire to be more than I am. So. Okay. What advice has influenced you the most in your life? Uh, again, that's a, you know, that's a, that's a great one. Um, you know what I, and this is what I, I, in the inscription in my book, um, just having the mindset that your greatest day is yet to come. And I, you know, I, 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 I pepper my kids with that. Uh, my, uh, all of my kids have had the great fortune of being uh, playing in the state championship soccer game uh, in high school and uh, three and one. Um, but, you know, when my sons won, 
I told them, I said, your greatest day is yet to come. You know, you don't rest on your past laurels. Just keep looking forward. There's keep working, keep working, keep working. Um, and I think that's, that's something that we all need to aspire to. Don't ever be done. Don't ever be done. Yeah. Oh, what a great one. This is, I'm definitely going to make this a must listen to podcast, <laughs> at least for three people, you know, and um, yeah, and, there you go. <laughs> but it's going to be one of the must for a lot of people because it sets the stage of that. You have that capability yourself. I know this one's tough for you. Cause I know that you are a reader because I can see them behind you. You've got the bookshelf behind you, but share one of your favorite books and why you choose that one. Well, I, I will disqualify anything I've written because um, okay. they're all my favorites. And if they're not my favorites, they're nobody's, you know, but my, my favorite book is really the one that got me started. Um, and it's, the book is called bringing out the best in people by Alan Loy McGinnis. It's, it's kind of in reprint now. It's um, it's probably, it might even be in public domain, but he, it was one of the early books, almost psychology books where he talks about just human interaction and, and, and as the title says, bringing out the best in people and, and how to treat people. And, and when I read that book, I wasn't a reader until that point. Somebody had handed me that book and I don't know if they thought I needed it or just, um, you know, whatever. But I read that. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, there's just so much here. And then, you know, that led me into a little bit of John Maxwell, which, you know, he references lots of people. And, and as you can see on the bookshelves, I mean, there's just lots of books. Um, and uh, but it started with bringing out the best in people. Great little 120 page read. Excellent. We'll have that in show notes. So if you're looking for it or trying to get it and you're exercising right now or driving, don't try to stop and write it down. We've got it covered for you in the chargepodcast.com in the show notes. My last uh, question for you, Frank. What legacy do you want to leave the world? Well, I mean, the legacy I want to leave the world is um, just inspiring people to help others. Um, you know, we're, that's, I mean, that's really what it's all about, you know, just helping others. And uh, certainly what I want to be known for. And, and uh, um, I want to inspire other people to do that. You, you, you said it earlier, ripples you know, creating those ripples that, you know, people kind of continue on and continue on. And, and, you know, there were people in my life who were like this and I just want to continue that on. Well, you've definitely done that today because you've inspired people. Some of the chargers that's on this podcast, this is a the reason they listen to the podcast and really allowed them to take what you said and now be able to take action on it. And as the host of the podcast. I can't thank you enough for saying yes and joining me today. Well, thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. Now, Frank, share with them how they can reach out to you and connect with you. Yeah, the easiest way to get a hold of me is I have a website, uh, www.frankagin.com and F R A N K A G I N.com. There, you can get to my LinkedIn, you can get to my Facebook, you can get to my email, you can see my podcast, and you can see my books. It's kind of a uh, it's kind of the central hub and people like to communi communicate all different ways. And I will meet people however they like to communicate. I would definitely tell you to do that. And again, it'd be in show notes. So if you're trying to figure out what that is, we've got that in show notes for you at chargepodcast.com. Please check it out and really decide chargers today. What relationships do you need to make an impact on? That would be my action step that I would share with you is what is the impact? Don't just write down their name but what impact do you want to make with them and then decide what that action is going to be to be able to start making that impact. That's really what networking is. That's what building relationships, what Frank has shared with us today allows us to do each and every day. So chargers, thanks for joining us today. And I look forward to having you back next week. Please like, and share the podcast and share it with others. That's how we keep growing our audience. Thanks for being here and make it a great day. This podcast has ended, but your life doesn't just stop. To continue your inspiring journey, head over to chargepodcast.com and access all the tools and resources mentioned on today's show. If you enjoyed this episode, consider sharing with somebody who may also benefit from the advice provided. That's chargepodcast.com. Until next time, charge in business and life.